Josh Birdie. Let's make it happen. Are you guys ready for Josh Birdie? It's a Seinfeld edition. Get your pretzels. They could be making you thirsty. All right. Do you have your big salad? Are you guys ready to go? Uh, this has been in the mix for seven years. I believe the first time Tom and I started talking about Seinfeld and who knew more was after like an early schmoes at a Buffalo Wild Wings on Hollywood Boulevard in like 2013. So this is a long time in the making. It's a pandemic, panorama, mayhem event. Uh, I'm going to let your host take it over for now. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, his comedy special, Dog Stepfather, is currently on Amazon Prime. It is Mark Ellis. This is... A Coors Light, and it's also Seinfeld Jeopardy. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the very first installation of Seinfeld Jeopardy. Now, you know Josh McCuga, you know his counterpart, Tom Dagnino, the best of friends. They do wind sprints on the beach together. They skip down Venice with the joyable, glee look on their face, but not today, folks. No, they are bitter enemies because they both love the famed sitcom Seinfeld, debuting in 1989 and running all the way through 1998 is when it had its last dance. And in the middle, oh boy, do we get a lot of great trivia nuggets to nibble on here tonight. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce your contestants for today's Jeopardy in the Seinfeld World matchup. Up first, you know him, you don't love him, neither do shirts. It is Bobby Gucci, Tom Dagnino, Finstock. Boom. What's oh, up? I, you, hello, you decided Mark. To, uh, you decided to put clothes on. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, somebody was outside. Uh, there's a window over here, and there's a lady who always looking in, and she's got binoculars. And I had, I was forced to put a shirt on. I feel like for you, that kind of environment would actually want you to take a shirt off to give her a show. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I well, she's seen it a million times. You know, that's the issue here. All so, right, this uh, is a very uh, Kramer-ish. Seinfeld the contest kind of episode where yes. somebody else can see into your window when you are indeed naked. So Tom, mm -hmm. I, I, was, I was talking to Josh, your opponent pre-show, and he seems to have a pretty good handle on Seinfeld, as I've always known him to have. You, as always, a little bit more of a wild card. Where mm -hmm. do you and your Seinfeld trivia come from? You know, it's crazy. I've never watched an episode when it was on Thursdays at nine o'clock, you know, in the late eighties and early nineties. Never. I've never seen a live episode, not even the finale. Um, and my mom used to be like, Thomas, you've got to watch this show. And I'm like, ah, oh, mom, I'm, I'm in high school. I'm going to things. I, I, I like chicks and things like that. I was like, I'm not watching this show. She's like, you got to watch it. You're, you remind me of Kramer. And I'm like, oh, okay, fine. So, uh, you know, one time I think I had like the flu or something back in the day. I'm like, hey, let me give this show a shot. And I think I watched the Hernandez episode, The Boyfriend. And I'm like, God damn it, this show is actually really funny. And then next thing you know, I just started watching, watching, and watching it. And I'm like, wait a minute, there's like festivist stuff here. I go, this is, this is the life I want to live. So I live vicariously through Seinfeld in a lot of ways and a lot of stuff I write and formulate and the way Larry David writes his comedy, which is like circular logic is sort of kind of the same way I, I live my life. You know, I'll talk about something and not mention it for like 45 minutes and then bring it right back. And that's exactly that's how Larry does it. And that's how kind of like I model my comedy after as well. That's it. So you're saying that your life is predicated upon two things, callbacks and nothing. That's correct. That is correct. Sounds um, fair. Sounds yeah. authentic and accurate. So, Tom, yeah. you're about to get going. Gucci yeah. verse, as you'll be known for the duration of this show, but okay. you got to have somebody to compete against. And who mm -hmm. better than the person who owns this domain that you're watching on the interwebs right now? His entire extended mm -hmm. family is watching, including <laughs> Deck Toss three time winner Jess Jawadi. Please welcome Josh McCuga to the show. Thank you, guys. Thank you all so much. Uh, you know, Oh my! And he froze uh, right away, Tom. Uh, and, and, uh, and Mark, before we get actually flagged on the internet, we can't call it Jeopardy. We have to call it Josh Purdy. Just, just the heads up. I sent you a graphic that said Mar Purdy, and <laughs> what happened? <to> that? <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Josh, um, we, we just met Tom a little bit. We're going to get to know yes. you a little later in the show. But before we kick things off, I just want to ask your confidence level going into a trivia match featuring a topic that you dearly love. Well, Mark, you know, you never pick me to win anything when it comes to trivia, ever. Or life, yes. Or, or life, thank you very much, I appreciate that. And uh, so, you know, 
my confidence right now is way more confident than going into a normal movie trivia, TV <laughs> trivia, whatever. Like I know I have watched every episode of Seinfeld so many different times that like my confidence is an all time high. I feel like this is like if Tyson had fought Holyfield before he went to prison, this would be the fight that everybody wanted to see. This is a heavyweight battle. This is Ali and Frazier in their prime fighting it out on the greatest TV show ever made. In my opinion, there isn't a show that touches it. Nope, not even a, not even a question about it. I mean, The Monsters is great too, but uh, Seinfeld is pretty fantastic. Well said, I, Tom, well said. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up, Tom, because your final Josh Pretty question is actually about The Monsters and not about Seinfeld at all. There you so. go. 13, 13, Mark and late. Pat Priest, Fred Gwynn, Avon cool. DiCarlo. Get to that when we get to that. But in the meantime, yeah. I want to let all the folks out there watching know that not only are you playing along casually <laughs> with the two combatants here on camera, but occasionally I'm going to announce that a question that is asked is actually worth $5 to you. And whoever the first person I see get that comment correct in the comment section is going to get a $5 Venmo or PayPal courtesy of your old pal Mer Griffin. So keep your eyes and ears open for that. For the competitors and everybody keeping score at home, it works a lot like normal Jeopardy with the exception that no competitor can lose points for inaccurately answering a question. Once we determine who has control of the board, that competitor will have their pick of five different categories in each round that they want to run through. Once we're finished with that category, the opposite competitor will then have their pick of the remaining four categories and so on and so forth. Should a competitor miss a question, the option of stealing is always on the table for their opponent. So without further ado, I'm going to set the table with your five round one topics and then we'll get control of the board. So in round number one of Seinfeld and Josh Brady, your categories are the Fab Four, It Takes a Village, Meet the Parents, Yada, 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 and No Soup for You. Ooh. And the way that we determine control of the board here is I'm going to ask a question family feud style or fam Markley feud style so we don't get flagged for that game show either. So, Tom, Josh, as soon as you know the answer to this first question, just shout it out. Whoever gets it first has control of the board and your first point. What is the name of the cafe the gang hangs out Monks. at? Monks. Fuck. Josh did get, get it second. Tom Dagnino yes. was first. Tom is on the board with a point. So, Tom... Out of the hey, categories I just read to you, wait, which real quick, Mark, real quick, Tom, uh, make sure you turn on private chat so you don't see the chat from anybody else. From on copy that, see that. So see, you see the private chat on the side. Yes, I got it. Yep, I'm in. All right, cool. All right, cool. Tom is many things. A cheater is not one of them. No. I know this. I know this. Yeah. At least not in terms of trivia. Tom, <laughs> one nothing. Oh. So out of those five categories, the Fab Four, it takes a village, meet the parents, yada yada yada, or no soup for you. Which category do you want to start with? I'll do the Fab Four. <clears throat> Fab Four, obviously, the name implies it's about Jerry, Elaine, George, and Kramer. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tom, for one point, Jerry wrestles an elderly woman and steals what kind of bread? That would be a marble rye. Tom has a point. Give me, the, give me the, your old bag. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tom, your two-point question. Elaine asks a flame to change his name because he shares his moniker with what serial killer? The answer is, and she wanted to change it to Ned and a couple other things, but it's Joel Rifkin. Tom has two more points. <laughs> and he is cooking early. Stuart right. Rifkin? No. Yeah. Next. No. He's like Next. Dion. What about Dion? What about Dion Rifkin? <laughs> this is what I was looking forward to in this show. Is like in between questions. Yeah. Feel free to like quote it. Yeah. Like this is a celebration of everything. Yeah, we're the, we're yeah, the best. Yeah, yeah. Crew Todd. Mm, yeah. No, not Todd. I sat yeah. behind him in college, and every time he drank, he went. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> no. And I am already kicking myself for not writing a Todd Gack question. Todd Gack. Gack. You Gack. Yeah, All you right. Gack. Tom, in the yeah. category of the Fab Four, your three-point question. When George purports to be a marine biologist, he pulls <laughs> what brand of golf ball out of a whale's blowhole? Uh, you know, Kramer got a bunch of them for free. I think it was 500 or something like that. And, uh, you know, it uh, pulls out a Titleist. Got it. 
Well said. The number one ball in golf, Tom. Everybody knows. Yeah, you're that's not that's the, the truth. You're not playing golf. The C was right. angry that day, my friends, like an old man <laughs> trying to give back soup at a deli. Josh the is the working, waiting for his chance at a steal. Tom currently 7 nothing over yeah. Josh, but Josh has yet to select his category. Uh, each question does get harder with the subsequent points totaling up totally. faster. Tom, your four-point question in the category of the Fab Four. In the famous Chinese restaurant episode, how much money does Jerry offer Elaine to eat an egg roll off of someone's plate? The answer is... 20 bucks. That is incorrect for a steal for four points, Josh. This could be big. The answer is $50. It is $50. Damn it. Good Josh work, Josh. Go. It's on the board da, da, da. in a big way. Wow. Uh, little, nice little, work, thank you. Uh, the the uh, Mater D at the Chinese restaurant also played uh, Lao Ping in Big Trouble Little China. Yep. Very true. Yep. yep. Come uh, right. <laughs> Cut, right? <laughs> Your Damn, last question course, yeah. in the Fab Four, Tom, for five big points. What is the name of the theater that Kramer takes it upon himself to help renovate to show Spartacus? Oh, damn. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Uh, do, 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 uh, let me think. Hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Mm, damn it, I, I can know this. Right here. I know can this. see it. I can right. see it. I know I can see it. The... Three, two. Do I got a GTA rule? You do not. Uh, the, and, uh, and, no. Fuck. Josh, for a steal. It's it's a it's like the Montgomery. That's not right. Uh, it's not right. We're looking for the Alex Theater. Alex. Yeah. I, Alex I was gonna I was gonna say Angelica or something like that. The damn, Alex. I knew it started with an A. I just didn't. Re really damn. good question, Mark. Really very, good. Very very good question. Uh, really good. In fact, we have an Alex Theater in Los Angeles. It was renovated, and I was going to perform at the new renovated Alex Theater mm -hmm. on March 20th. So uh, we'll, we'll get back there at some point. <laughs> the, the theater. The theater. So currently, after one category has been closed up, Tom Dagnino enjoys a 7-4 to four lead over Josh. But Josh, now control the board is yours. Out of the categories, it takes a village, meet the parents, yada, 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 or no soup for you. Which one feels lucky? Probably the yada 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 episode is very. Uh oh. While Josh is frozen, Josh, since you were frozen <laughs> for a second, I'm going to remind our competitors right. that it was right title, the title of the category is not necessarily implying everything yeah. about what's in that category. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right. I do like the yada yada episode, but I'm going to go with uh, It Takes a Village. Takes a village. It takes a village. This would be a category about the neighbors and the other characters around the world of Seinfeld. Okay. Okay, Josh, for one point to pull within two of Tom Dagnino's lead. When a serial killer is running loose near the gang's residence, he is given what menacing nickname? The Lopper. One point for Josh. Well done. <laughs> the Lopper! Let me back in! Let me back in! Let me yep. back in! Amazing. <laughs> All right. And it takes a village. Who was Kramer referring to when he said he happens to be a little eccentric? Most geniuses are. Uh, okay. The maestro? That is incorrect for a two-point oh, steal, no. Tom. He's, he, you know what he is? He's that, that holistic healer. Uh, uh, I think his name is Tobe. We're looking for the soup Nazi. Oh, oh. looking. Oh. Damn. I, I I wasn't I wasn't thinking that. I thought it was Tobe, damn. the guy who gives George the tea. Yeah, played by uh, the guy who plays Ned Ryerson in yes. um, Groundhog yes. Day. But not yes. a bad guess. We both had good guesses there, Josh. Oh good man, what is that? I knew that guy's name at one point in my trivia life. I knew that guy's name, Ned Ryerson. Ah, I, the idiot. He is a working actor. I just can never remember his name. He's around all the time. All the yeah. time. All right. Back to, by the way, I met the soup Nazi at the Hooters on Hollywood Boulevard maybe eight years ago. Could not have been nicer, more warm of an individual. Super nice guy. Had wings. Amazing. Okay. Yep, yeah. Yeah. Control yep. of the category It Takes a Village is yours. Your three-point okay. question. What real-life comedian plays the prop comic Ronnie K? 
that would be Dom Herrera. Josh has taken the nice lead. move. The first Eight. time I met Dom Herrera at the Laugh Factory, I said, you look different. Must be the nostrils. And he got a big kick out of it. I bet. He did. <laughs> Amazing. He, did. he got a big kick out of it. Yeah. Speaking of very sweet individuals, he is definitely one of them. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay, Josh, two questions left in this category. Elaine's boyfriend, Brett, is obsessed with the Eagle song Desperado. Yes. What song does Elaine try to claim as her own? Um, shoot. Witchy Woman? It is Witchy Woman. Yep. Yes. Witchy Witch 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 Woman. Oh, yeah. oh Witchy Woman. Witchy Woman. Yes. 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 It is now 12 to 7, and thank Not you to Kyle Harlow and J-Dog uh, letting us know that Stephen Toblowski is the gentleman who plays Ned Ryerson in Ground. Oh, wow. Okay. Stephen Toblowski. Got it. Right. Wow. Okay. So now we move on to your fifth and final question in the category, It Takes a Village. Okay. Josh, in the Apology episode, George demands an apology from his childhood chum played by James Spader. What is that character's nickname? Oh, no. <sighs> and folks, as the writer of all these questions, it gives me such great joy to see them both stumped occasionally. Man, it, it, it's, he has to apologize because there's a hole in the sweater. Or the, he, he stretches the neck on the sweater. He works at Baskin Robbins. I don't know. Uh, Mick, I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, Tom, this could be a huge five point steal ah, if you get the I back know, the I know, I know. Uh, and and says, what's, what's the question again? I can repeat it. In the apology okay. episode, George demands an apology from his childhood chum, played by James Spader. What is that character's nickname? My childhood chum, James by Spader. Uh, I, I, know it ain't, I know it ain't that guy. Jeez, uh, that's a tough question, man. That's a uh, really good question, Mark. Uh, anyway, uh, 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 here. A big head? I don't know. Looking for Stanky Hanky. Oh. Stanky Hanky. That is a hard five-point that question. Is, that is well a done, deep cut. Mark. That's a deep cut. Well done. Hey, yeah, well I done. learned from Chris Galiski, okay? I learned from the best here. You did. You did. Missouri's All finest. Right. Chris Galiski. So 12 to 7. Uh, Tom, Josh really could have done some damage to you there because he had stolen a four-pointer from you, but he wasn't able to conjure that five-point question. So it is 12 for Josh. <sighs> Seven for Tom, and we go back to the one they call Gucci, who owns property in multiple parts of Croatia. Um, <laughs> for your next category, would you like to choose Meet the Parents, Yada Yada Yada, or No Soup for You? Uh, let's do Yada Yada Yada. Okay, Yada Yada Yada. This category is about articles and objects. Mm. Uh, articles and objects. Tom, your one point question. Which host of the Today Show repeatedly mocked Jerry for his puffy shirt? That would be Bryant Gumble. One point for Tom. Well done. Well Thank done. You. He's within four of Josh's lead. <laughs> oh, what Tom. a gumble. What an episode. Yeah. I yeah, mean, uh, the amazing. low talker, the low talker episode is unbelievable because there's I, so many layers to that episode. And let's writing. be honest. Mm -hmm. Every time you've seen a friend dressed like a pirate, if they don't say, I don't want to be a pirate, they, they I don't all live. The they're not yeah. living. That's it. I wish I had a puffy shirt. You're the first pirate. Yeah. Okay. You could, Mark, had you had a puffy shirt? My God. Uh, My I know. God. I know. It would have been better than, 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 than what happened, which is a ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> Tom? Yes. Uh, how many sponges come in a case of 60? In a case oh, of it's a different category. Different category. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Your real <laughs> two-point question. Okay. <laughs> what is the actual name of the product Jerry's dad refers to as a tip calculator? That would be the wizard. Tom has two more points. <laughs> he got some Willards from Bob Sacamano. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. God, this show is so good. It's My so good. Goodness. So good. All right. The Tom, your next question. Yes. Cigars that were purported to be from Cuba end up being made where? Um, I think the answer is Peru. Tom has taken the lead over Josh Bakuga. 
Well done, Tommy. Uh, well done, Gooch. I thought well, it was, I was thinking uh, Puerto Rico, but I was like, no, 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 it's definitely not it. I always thought it was well, Dominican, but yeah, I think you're right. Well, no, Peru. Kramer had the Dominicans ro uh, <laughs> rolling, the, rolling the thing. The roll right, yeah. right. Yeah. It is it's so like, fun Peru. hosting this and also – because I can look at the live chat and just seeing the mix of correct answers, but also just random Seinfeld quotes they all are throwing. So everybody out there watching is doing a fantastic job. Yeah. Keep it up. And to spur everybody on to keep it up, this next question is worth $5 for one of you. So whoever the first person Ooh. to comment is going to get 5 bucks. Not for you, Tom, or you, Josh, yeah. for the, the commenters out there. So it's like, uh, this is like uh, double, whatever, Double Jeopardy or uh, whatever that is called, right? Uh, Not Double Jeopardy. Daily. Still Daily Double Jeopardy. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Still Single Jeopardy. Okay. Um, Tom, your question for four points, as well as everybody out there for $5, mm -hmm. which character made a pasta representation of Jerry called the Fusilli Jerry? Wh which character? Yes. Uh, Kramer. Tom Dagnino mm -hmm. has four more points. You and are. Get that Fusilli question. Right. Jerry, because you are silly. <laughs> okay, Tom, you have 17 what, points. Josh has 12 points. And now you can take a 10 point lead over Josh ooh, if you get ooh, the five point question correct. This is huge. This is huge. Huge, dude. Tom, how Who much that? money did Elaine have to bid to win the set? How much money did Elaine have to bid? How much did she bid in order to win the set of JFK Golf Club? Oh. So it's not how much money she had to bid because she exceeded her limit, but she mm -hmm. still had to the golf club. I think – was it – was it $25,000? That is incorrect. Josh, you can tie Tom Dagnino if you can get this number correct. Okay. It's between like nineteen, twenty, and $21,000. I'm pretty sure. I'm going to say $21,000. Man, my poker face is good. You were on the number, Josh, but you went $1,000 too high. $20,000 oh. even. Oh. She was allotted $10,000 by Jay yeah. Peterman, and she exceeded it. So She's like 15000 And who did she lose to? Oh, no, Suella Mishki. Yeah, she beat Suella Mishki. Exactly. Very yeah. good. All right. So, under. But Josh, avoiding big-time damage because Tom didn't get that answer either. So, Josh, you trail by five. You're going into yep. the fourth category here in yep. your first round of Seinfeld Josh Brady. So you can either select Meet the Parents or No Soup for You. I'm going to go No Soup for You. Hmm. All right. No Soup for You. This is a category about enemies of the gang. Ooh. All right. This could be interesting, yeah. Josh. This could be yes, interesting. Yes, it could be. It could be. All right. I think that Josh might get this first question. What restaurant does the hacky Banya insist on Jerry taking him for a meal? Mendy's. Yeah. There it is. Mendy's. They've got the best swordfish. It's, it's the best, Jerry. Jerry. It's the best. The best. It's the first place. You work out, Jerry? Yeah. I used to hang around with him at Goal when Goal was open on uh, Third Street. I never really wanted yeah. to ask him about Banya stuff. I didn't want to ask him about it. But he was always he a big, sport, big sport guy. And I'll tell you what. He was after the chicks there too, for sure. I could see that. Banya, Banya had a yeah. mentor. Yeah, he did. Ladies. Right. Being funny, it gets yeah. the women. Am I right, fellas? There you go. Oh, yeah. You're right. You're right. As you can clearly see. Yes. <sighs> okay, Tom, back to you. Um, excuse me, Josh, back to you. So in no soup for you in that category, for two points, Lloyd Braun spirals back towards mental insanity in part – Due to what phrase repeatedly uttered by Frank Costanza? Serenity now. Two more points for John. Nice done. Nicely done. It is. Serenity you know, now. Insanity for later. 15 for Josh. <laughs> that is correct. That's a nice tag there, Tom. <laughs> yep. All right. Josh. Oh, boy. Your third question. In the no soup for you category is our first daily double. Ooh, there it is. <laughs> okay, so Josh, this is not worth three points. This is worth as many or as little points as you would care to wager. Wow. This is and if you miss it, there is no stealing. It's just you would lose that amount of points. 
so it's right now the score is what 17 15 tom it is 17 to 15 in favor of tom let's go five points okay five points right at all. <laughs> let's make it a true daily double <laughs> <laughs> go big or go home um for five points due to a series of occurrences Dr. Tim Watley is unable to use his two Super Bowl tickets. Who ends up joining Jerry at the big game? Shit. Newman. Yeah. Yes, it is. For five points. <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely done. Oh, man. Oh, All man. All right. Congratulations. Okay. Josh, you do, you. do you do daily doubles when you do Josh Purdy? Uh, no, I don't. So way to go. Yes. This is really good. It's it, that was that was literally when I was planning. This took insanely long for me to plan this week, but like I worked harder at this than I do any of my paid jobs. Just a little <laughs> I, I mean, and, and it's it's going great. This is fantastic. The, the daily doubles were what I was most excited. <laughs> I, I live a simple life, folks. This All is right. hey, this is pandemic, Mark. I believe you have a Coors Light in your freezer. I believe you have a Coors Light. Ooh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna freezer. get to that Coors Light in just one sec. Okay. Um. Okay, so it is now Josh is 20, Tom is at 17. In the category No Soup for You, Josh, for four points, in the race episode, Jerry starts dating a lady who works for his high school rival, Duncan Meyer. What is her first name? Her name, Mark, is Lois. Four more points for Josh. He's starting to feel it here. A good date. That's one of my favorite episodes of all time. It's, I mean, without I a doubt, one of my. Not to race. <laughs> and George is like, it's not the race. What a, Mr. What a great Bevilacqua, the, yeah. the, the track and field yeah. coach. It's uh -huh. an incredible episode. Kramer really, with really eight is. ribbons, or whatever the hell he's yeah. got. Yeah. All right. So, um, Josh, you have one more question for five points in the category No Soup for You. You clearly chose this category wisely. Mm -hmm. What is the first and last name of Jerry's jilted ex lover who performs a show called Jerry Seinfeld is the Devil? You, oh, sorry, you kind of broke up a little. As did you. I will ask the question again. Yeah, you ready? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. What is the full name, first and last name, of Jerry's jilted ex lover who performs a show called Jerry Seinfeld is the Devil? All right. So it's Kathy Griffin who plays the right. actress. Right. It's Kathy something. I think it's like she. I don't know. I, I, I'm not going to find this. Kathy Stewart. All right. That is incorrect. Tom, you can steal this and you can pull to within two points of Josh if you get the steal. Oh, man. This is really a tough one. Uh, like I said, I knew, I, knew, I knew it was Kathy Griffin. That's for sure. Uh, and then she, Charles Dirt, not Charles Gruden. Uh, Charles Grodin, man. the hot stuff. Yeah, 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 exactly. Kramer uh, doesn't talk the whole episode. No, yeah. he doesn't. Yeah. Uh, damn. Uh, I think it's, let me try to go down the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. Need it. Nope. Bum, bum, bum. Um, we're looking for Sally Weaver. Sally oh. Weaver. Sally. I thought it was Kathy, Sally Weaver. Yeah. Ah! Damn it. I hated those episodes. I hated her. I don't like her. I, I didn't. I, I, it was just Can't too much. Her. Yeah. Can't stand much. Her. Can't stand All right. Well, we have one more category in round at number one. And then we're going to meet your contestants. And we actually have a little surprise for you when we meet our Ooh. contestants. We'll get to that. We have one more category. So because this is the last category in round number one, here's how it works. If you're familiar with the movie Trivia Schmodown, it's a little bit like that. Each contestant is going to hear the question, write down their attempt at an answer, and then show me the whiteboard at the same time they verbalize their answer into the microphone. Point values remain the same. Your category is meet the parents. Mm -hmm. And... Your first question for one point. Write it down. I'll ask you by name to reveal your answer. What's the score mark again? What's that? What's the score again? It is uh, 24 to 17. Gotcha. 24 to 17? Here yes. we go. A metal pole and feats of strength are hallmarks of what holiday? Just give you all a little layup there. Yep. All right. Um, Tom, I'm going to go to you first whenever you're ready. Uh, the answer is uh, Festivus. 
That is correct, Josh McCougan. For the rest of us. It is a festivus for the rest of us. Nailed it. Each get a point. I don't like tinsel. It's distracting. <laughs> All right. Uh, your next question. I need both first names of Jerry's parents. This one actually stumped me in doing my research. I knew George's parents, but I did not know Jerry's mom and dad. It's a, it's it, it, you know what? It's a, this is one of the questions I studied because I was like, what the hell is her name? So there was study involved. Everybody knows the dad. I can't. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Josh, going to you first. I don't think this is right. Morty and Ellen. Very, very close, yet incorrect. Does Tom have it? It's Morty and Helen. Yes, it is. Oh, come on. Can't give oh, it to you. Very close, Joshua. Very close. Can't Damn. give it to you. So it is 25 to 20. And thank you, uh, Jay Oliveira, for your Super Chat donation. He says, this is amazing. I love Seinfeld. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you for the super chat. And we encourage all of that good natured giving around these parts. All right. Your next question and meet the parents, write down your answer. Which parent on the show was accused of having quote, Jimmy arms. It's a great, maybe forgotten episode of Seinfeld. I loved it. We started with Jimmy Legs at the beginning of the episode, then we moved on to somebody having Jimmy arms. I will. I believe that's the Sarah Silverman episode as Kramer's girlfriend, is it not? Yes, it is. Maybe. Yeah. But it sounds like everybody here is on the same level. So, Tom, what was your answer? It is Estelle Costanza. That is correct, Josh. Estelle Costanza. Okay. So go, buddy. A piece. Well done, sir. I need, well I, done. I, need, I needed that two-pointer. I need, I need to catch up here. You got All that right. one. Two more questions in the category Meet the Parents, obviously about the parental figures in the world of Seinfeld. This is your four-point question, gentlemen. Write down your answer. What is the first name of Kramer's mother? One of the great mysteries of Seinfeld was the origins of Cosmo Kramer. For four points, Josh Bakuga, what do you have? Her name is Babs. Babs Kramer. We will take Babs. You know that episode when they went to get Kramer's jacket back? Yeah. And uh, the one guy was playing it, the, the, the Total Recall guy, where the yes. nigger shot him. He's like, yeah, she was a beer drinking, guzzling, big, fat mess. And Kramer gets pissed. That's so good. Yeah. Uh, the so name good. is Babs. Babs um, Kramer. As well. Babs Kramer. That was her name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So currently, by my count, it is 32 for Josh and it is 27 for Tom. Well, wow, that's our age. Perfect. Point question is on the way. And meet the parents. Who broke the news to Frank and Estelle that their son George was dead? What character? And this is your last question in round number one for five points. That get character. those in. Get those in. Dead. Yes. Tom Dad Nino, what do you have? The answer is I got it wrong. Jerry. That is incorrect. Does Josh yeah. McCougar have it? Pull the trigger. I believe it's quickly. it's George Steinbrenner, isn't it? Yep. It's Steinbrenner. It is George Steinbrenner. Pull the trigger too quickly. Damn it. Yep. That is huge. Huge. Jerry, deal. it's Frank. Steinbrenner Court. George yeah. is dead. Call me back. <laughs> damn it. That's <laughs> that's where I got that's where I damn it. Yep. Here's where it stands. Josh Bakuga has 37 points with that last steal of five points. And Tom Danino, still very competitive, trails it by 10 with 27 points. 37 to 27. Before we go to double jeopardy, I want to highlight uh Matthias Paleco. Thank you so much. He is watching from Argentina. He's a 30-year-old dude from Argentina. Seinfeld is his favorite show. He's always quoting it, and almost no one gets him, so he says, this is great, guys. And to top it off, he donated $50. So thank you Whoa, so much, Matthias. Matthias. I'm going to reward your $50 donation because we have a special surprise just for you and everybody else watching here, Matthias. Ladies and gentlemen, here to help us meet our contestants, get a closer look into their lives, is Ken Knapsack. Oh, my God. 
five. Wow. Here. This is a, this is a fun event you guys are putting on here. This is one of the greatest shows of all time. Uh, the, you know, the, I'm not counting wings, but, uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, happy to be here. So I've been watching. It's been a great battle. Thank um, you, Ken. Ken, Ken I, I, I want you to meet each one of these competitors because I know you're not familiar with either one of them. Before I go get my beer from the freezer, I do want to say Zeke Gallo in the comment before I introduced you just randomly commented amidst all the Seinfeld trivia and quotes. He said, off topic, Ken Knapsack is the best. That's true. You can look it up. And then magically, you're here. So have yeah. at it. Say hi to the boy. It's not an answer. Uh, it's not an answer to the question here. Uh, let's start with the uh, visitor to this matchup here. Josh is playing home. Uh, Bobby Gucci, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself here in this, uh, before we get to the next round. Well, there's breaking news. Uh, Robert Meyer Burnett has traded you for two oh. meatball sandwiches. I mean, it's That's, perfect. It's I, a great deal. <laughs> I'm disappointed, uh, kind of disappointed you didn't pick me up there. But uh, Bobby, uh, tell us uh, your interests. What do you do on uh, Friday evenings other than this? Uh, tell us about yourself. Look, I mean, you know, uh, when, like I said, me and Josh have uh, been around a long time with Seinfeld Trivia. And we always go back and forth and make these references. And people look at us like, these guys are idiots. Like, nobody knows what they're talking about. And we always did it. And then I saw him the other day on the street. Uh, we were making a deal and uh, we were just like, let's do some, let's do something. He's like, let's do the Seinfeld trivia. I'd be like, yeah, why not? I go, it makes all the sense in the world. Cause why not? You know? And then, uh, and it just get, it got me watching again. Cause I haven't watched in a while. I didn't mm -hmm. have been watching any TV uh, during this pandemic. I've just been reading books and working out and trying to be as sexy as I possibly can be. But yeah. once this happened, I was like, you know what? I got to start watching again. And mm -hmm. now I'm like reliving some of these episodes. And I'm like, this is just gold every single episode and me and josh had a really interesting conversation the first season was always like you know it's only four episodes or whatever it was and the second season was only 13 this thing was close to getting canceled canceled on so many different ways uh but i underappreciated the first season yeah. and also some of the second season you know so and then i go back and watch it it's like i used to watch i used to like rocky four the most right okay. before yeah. i knew what was really going on sure sure and then I got to I got to start and watching the first season. I'm like, this is really about nothing. Sure, yeah, that okay. was traditionally about nothing before they went off to absurd land, which is amazing yeah. as well. So yeah, hey, uh, Tom, it says here in my notes that you were banned from Shea Stadium from 1992 to 1995. Care to explain? That's correct. Well, I I raided Mo Vaughn's locker room, uh, and crashed his car in the parking lot, and that was it. That'll do it. That'll do it. Thank you, uh, Tom, Bobby Gucci, Josh McCuga playing hey, home tonight here. Uh, a big fan of uh, Josh. Pretty happy to be here. Sorry, I'm not Nick Scarpino, but uh, happy to be here. <laughs> um, tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, Josh, and your relationship to Seinfeld. Well, you know, uh, just a young kid from Pittsburgh who loved two things, and that was a neurotic Jewish dude from New York and a Canadian game show host. And so, you know, must-see TV on Thursday night in our house was you watch Jeopardy, then you went and did your homework, and then my parents let me come down and watch Seinfeld. Now, was it good parenting to let a 10-year-old watch season four of Seinfeld? No. Did I, did, I get, did I get many of the jokes? Of course not. Did I really enjoy what these all these idiots were up to? I sure did. And, you know, as – as most of the people that are around our age, we watch the later seasons live and caught up on the first seasons via reruns. And thank God Seinfeld, I mean, Seinfeld almost got me through my study abroad. It was the only show in English on my tiny little tube television in our apartment that I could legitimately watch on a Monday or a Tuesday night. Yeah. Oh, that's a great story. And it says here, Josh, in my notes, you love horse manes, making babies, and that you once got in a fist fight with Yarmir Yager at a <laughs> That's a wild story. Care to tell us a little bit more about that story? Yeah, you know, he lived in my buddy's neighborhood. We were playing street hockey. Yarmir Yager comes out acting all cocky like he's from the Czech Republic and didn't just win a Stanley Cup. Rifled a shot at me at goal, took me in the neck. So I, you know, I punched the mullet headed Czech Republic men. And here we are to this day, still not a big fan of Yarmir Yager, even though he won us two Stanley Cups. That's wild. Wow. All right, there you go. The contestants, Mark, back to you. I, I, DM, I, I DM'd uh, Wayne Gretzky's uh, girlfriend. Yeah, since, we, since we have you here, Ken, I, I do want to ask you, your history with Seinfeld. I, I, I never quite can get a read on whether you run hot or cold or lukewarm with the show. Oh, definitely run hot. I, uh, unlike Josh, watched it, but I missed the first season. Why? Uh, my family and I had made a choice to watch uh, Home Improvement with Tim Allen because it was oh, on the same night. 
And then I got convinced that to hearing my friends talk about this show, Seinfeld, uh, to give that a try. Never look back. Never watch the Home Improvement Show again. Big fan of Kirby Enthusiasm. But Seinfeld, definitely where that began, you know? For sure. Yeah. So um, quick Ellis family history is that I loved my favorite sitcom in the 90s was Martin. And then my aunt, uh, Amy, lived with us uh, for a little while. And she really got us hooked on Friends and Seinfeld, that NBC must see Thursday night lineup, which was just phenomenal. I was even a fan Incredible. of the single guy. The yeah. single guy. Yeah. Yeah. I think that Silverman? my dad liked Friends a little bit more than Seinfeld. And I think the reason is because my dad loved a peppy theme song and yeah. Seinfeld completely lacked that. And Friends had that in spades. I think that yeah. was the culture for him. But I think we all appreciate Seinfeld. Larry Payne chiming in with a super chat says, Mark Ellis is the Joe Gibbs of Josh Purdy. The show yeah. is amazing. Come on, Gucci, you got this. So Larry is sending $4.99 towards his support. Of Bobby Gucci, Ken. While we have you, I we may as well just trade off rounds here in Double Jeopardy. <laughs> sure, I got your document open. Just take me. Uh, you tell me what I need to read. Happy to be part of this great event tonight. Then here Mark, we go. I will kick off with Josh. Can I call? Timeout. Can I call a timeout real quick? Is can we that's take a small? Can we take a small drink break. I'd like to refresh my cocktail if that's possible. Sure, yeah, I, I, it's, I'll give. It's I'll give some Seinfeld trip. I'll give some Seinfeld like kind of knowledge. Uh, okay. You know, okay. You know the, the original, the original song. They wanted this, to make it what? This actually gives us a great interlude, Ken, because I can ask you and Tom Dagnino single guy trivia question. There's a show called Single Guy, starring Jonathan Silverman, who played his doorman, who would occasionally go up and cook him breakfast. Oh, that's Brad crazy. Garrett. Uh, not no, that is incorrect. It's it's not Ernest Borgnine, was it? It was Ernest Borgnine. Yeah. Wow. There we go. Produce, show produced by Brad Hall, I believe. Uh, husband it was Brad. Ernest Borgnine, and Ken gets a bonus point for Brad Hall. So. Wow. Why, you know, why, did, why did Seinfeld – you know the reason why Seinfeld did so good to begin with is because they put it in a great time slot. Mm -hmm. They put it right behind Cheers. Cheers reruns. Do, 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 do. Because the first season aired in the summer, which is very rare, very and it, and it yeah. held strong. And then it just took off into the stratospheric levels that you know now we know today. Well, that's, that's the interesting thing about this show is that a lot of people are fans of this show. I'm a huge fan of Cheers. I would not do well at Cheers trivia. So the fact that you guys are not only professional appreciators of the show, but are answering tough trivia questions under the white hot spotlight of being on the world famous Josh McCuga Star of Eating History YouTube channel, that's mm -hmm. a prize in amongst itself. So here we go. For control of the board in round number two, I'm going to ask another question to the field. As soon as you think you know it, answer as quickly as possible. <clears throat> the series debuted in 1989, but it had a different name for the first episode. Seinfeld Chronicles. Seinfeld Chronicles. Tom Dagnino gets it. And that's <sighs> another point for Tom. And Tom, you have control of the board. And that's probably a mandatory question. Tom, yes. your categories are as follows. Would you like to pick Giddy Up, Where the Dingo Roam, <laughs> Occupational Hazards, When It Was a Game, or Sponge Worthy? Let's do Giddy Up. Giddy Up. All right. These are happenings and occurrences within the world of Seinfeld. Ken, do you see that occurrences doc? Um, ooh, I don't see that. Once you take this one, because it's not popping up on my <laughs> Roger that. All right, Tom. Sweating. This Sweating. is double Sweating. jeopardy. So the point right. values per question have doubled. So your first question is now worth two points. And that first question is in the episode The Contest, Kramer goes out almost immediately. Who is the second of the gang to lose the bet? That would be. Elaine. Two points for Tom right off the bat. Mm -hmm. George is like, you're out? I thought you were going to go into the springtime. <laughs> <laughs> John F. Kennedy Jr., Tommy. John what? F. Kennedy Jr. J That's right. A lot of people forget that was the same episode. Um, so, Tom, Junior. those two points combined with the point you earned for the Seinfeld Chronicles now have you trailing Josh by only seven points. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Your four-point question. Jerry's foot falls asleep. While it leads what store owner to assume that he's insulting him? Uh, 
and his name is Leaping Larry. Yes, it is. Four points for Tom. <laughs> That's an well done, Tommy. Well that's done. When, that's when Kramer's do it on the on the fire truck on the walkie. He's like, Kramer. Yes. Kramer? <laughs> he went down to the fire department. He gave him directions. Unbelievable stuff. <laughs> all right. Uh, thanks to everybody for all your donations. I'm not highlighting every super chat that comes in, but I'm going to highlight this one because uh, Jay Oliveira says he's been working in a hospital, and this trivia <laughs> is lifting his spirits. So, good stuff. No, thank, thank you for you. that. Yeah. Thank you. All right. We're here to lift some spirits and maybe give away some money to the folks. Um, Tom, this is now your six point question. Mm -hmm. Jerry gets his car stolen by a mechanic named Tony, played by whom? Pretty crazy. I pretty much just said his name. His name is Brad Garrett. Oh, that is correct. Right Brad Garrett also owns a great comedy club at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Jerry, Jerry, 51% of turns are right turns. Uh, it's <laughs> amazing stuff. <laughs> all right, so Tom, you have already racked up 12 points in this round. And you still have two questions to go. For eight points, at a baseball fantasy camp, Kramer accidentally punches what Yankee legend? Uh, that would be Mickey Mantle. Correct. I, I well think done. It, I think I thought it was I thought it was like Cleet Boyer because I I think he mentioned Cleet Boyer's name. No, too, he mentions yeah. uh, Joe Pepitone. Oh yeah, that's like, oh, Joe he, mentions that, no, he mentions that when he's on uh, the horse. All right, no, so no. maybe you're right. You might you might be right. You might be right. Yeah, because he's like this horse was owned by. Uh, yeah, Joe Pepitone. Joe Pepitone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Tom, you are in danger of you've already overtaken Josh Bakuya. You're in danger of having the first perfect round here in Ooh. Josh Brady's Seinfeld history. If you can get me this 10 point. Ooh. That's a lot of points. Okay. Just before dying, Jay Peterman's mother utters what final word? <laughs> Bosco. Yes. Bosco. He got it. Well like, done, Tom. Hell of a ride. Hell of a ride. Uh, possibly a former lover. <laughs> wow. 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 30 points in that round alone. And that means Tom Dagnino has taken a 58 to 37 lead over Josh Bakuga. Wow. But John, yeah. he, can cut real, he, can cut it, he can cut it real quick. It's not as bad as it seems because you can come back fast and furious. That's what Double Jeopardy is here for. So, Josh, between the categories – where the Dingo Roam, Occupational Hazards, When It Was a Game, or Sponge Worthy, which one do you want to take? I mean, first of all, Mark, congratulations on all your success as far as playing this game go. The categories are fantastic. You're doing a good job. Great question. Uh, you know, I, I have an update for everybody here. They don't just put anybody on Amazon Prime. <laughs> don't brother. step on it right now. It's right now. Uh, I would be I would be silly if I didn't choose sponge worthy. There you sponge go. Worthy. <laughs> All right, Ken Napsock. Um, this is referring to girlfriends, boyfriends, ex lovers. That's right. That's um, right. I have the category up here, Josh. Uh, this one's coming to you here. Uh, two point question, I believe. Right, we're going uh, on down here. All right. Two, four six eight ten. Yes, sir. Two, two four right. six eight ten. There you go. Josh McCuga, who played the girlfriend of Jerry that insisted her breasts were real and spectacular? That would be Terry Hatcher. Two Terry points. Hatcher. Two points for Josh. I then. think her name, her real name, what was it? Like, not Svetlana or like. It's Sylvia, Sylvia, I think. Yes, yeah, that's Sonia, something like that. All right, here we go. We are still in the category of sponge worthy question two. It's a four point question for you, Josh. While Jerry labors to get Putty and Elaine back together at the car dealership, George and a mechanic have a dispute over what candy bar? <laughs> Twix. They're all Twix. They there were all go. Twix. There you go. It's the only candy with the cookie crunch. <laughs> <laughs> next. Uh, Next uh, question here, six point question for you. Category sponge worthy. What is the name of the character that was romanced by both George, then Jerry, in the ex girlfriend episode? Can you repeat? You kind of broke up. My 
I, it just it just broke up a little bit. Sorry. All right. What is the name of the yeah, character yeah. that was romanced by both George then Jerry in the ex girlfriend episode? Sorry, you broke up again. I'm sorry. I don't know if it's my internet or your internet or something. It yeah. might, might be mine. I think it's yours, Jeff. Sorry. No problem. No problem. Uh, what is the name of the character that was romanced by both George then Jerry in the ex girlfriend episode? Marlene? I think that's right. That is correct. Wow. Good, 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 good work. That was a tough one, dude. I, right. I, I knew Jerry? It. I don't know. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. That's, she's got like, that. I saw you ask. I don't know. That was it. He's like, you're a cashier. All right. You're a cashier. Yeah. You Witty banter indeed. All right. Next question uh, is an eight-point question for you, Josh. In the Wig Master episode, George and Susan's house guest is a wig master for what upcoming production? Uh, later worn by Kramer, that would be Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Yep. That is correct, sir. That is nice correct. work, dude. That's a, that was a good one. That's a great episode. What were, they, what were they drinking, Josh? Wow. Uh, champagne coolies. Champagne coolies. That's right. Coolies. right. That's right. All right. Here's where we're at. We have one question remaining for a perfect round that Josh can answer. Wow. John uh, wow. Here we go. Here we go. This would be great. Keep. In the Sponge episode, uh, Jerry dates the charitable Lena after getting her phone number. How? I believe he took it off an AIDS walk sign up list. <laughs> wow. Big. Yes. Oh, wow. Wow. Perfect. Wow. Thank Perfect. you. Well done, dude. Well done. I, I got some butterflies in here going. Woo! It's, it's, it's working. Oh, this is how the game is designed. I'm sweating, dude. I'm sweating. It is 67 for Josh, 58 for Tom Bagnino. And if at the end of your first round, Ken, a 10 point yeah. lead seemed insurmountable, now it's just another drop in the bucket. Yeah, this is amazing. Both of these gentlemen showing that they spent a lot of Thursday nights, 9 p.m., uh, 8 Central, I'm, uh, watching this show, man. Or every morning in college from like 8 a.m. to 11 just yeah. watching the Seinfeld. Yeah. I was a 10 to 11 guy on WPIX in New York. 10 to I know what you're talking I love that 10 to 11. I love that 10 to 11. Amazing yeah. stuff. And they or continue I did that for three great. hours in a row last night just for fun. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, voila. <laughs> Tom, we go back to you. You won control of the board initially, as you did in round number one. So from the categories of where the dingo roam, occupational hazards, and when it was a game, which one would you like to choose? Let's play – let's do occupational hazards. Occupational hazards it is. I mean, I, I, I don't I have no idea what this is. So, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Occupational hazards has something to do with the gang and their workplaces. Ooh, okay. Okay, Tom. Yes. Your correct. question. <clears throat> Two points. George makes the decision to follow the opposite of every instinct he has, eventually landing him a job where? Uh, with the New York Yankees. Two points for Tom. Okay, Tom, your next question. For four points, who played the possibly maybe sort of deaf co-worker of Elaine's named Bob in the Friars Club episode? I love this guy. Uh, his name is Rob Schneider. Yeah, yeah it, it is. is. Yeah, yeah. Rob it, it's amazing. Schneider. I watched The Animal the other day. It's fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Uh, well, I don't know. Yeah. It's a solid three out of ten. Like he died, he, I like when he dives like a dolphin in there. It's amazing stuff. Isn't that Rachel uh, McAdams' first movie? No, like it's, a, like it's a real world girl. It's a real world uh, girl. Survivor. Colleen from Survivor. Colleen from Survivor. Colleen Colleen from Survivor. Yeah. That's what it is. Ooh, um, Ken, I don't know when you joined us uh, previously, but this is one of those scenarios that gets built into the game, and you never know when it's going to rear its ugly head. Tom, in the category of occupational hazards, your third question is a daily double. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Oh, this is huge. Holy okay. cow. So let me set the table for everyone. Okay, <sighs> Tom, you have 64 points to gamble with. Mm -hmm. You currently trail Josh by three. Josh okay. has 60. 
67. Those points are safe for right now. Mm -hmm. Your 64 points are what we're asking because you can wager as many or as little points as you want. So I have 64 and he has what? 67. 67. Oh, man. And is there any more of these on the board? Uh, no. There's two daily doubles and this is the last one. Make it a true daily double, you giant. <laughs> I'm gonna bet. I'm gonna bet half of it. Woo! Yeah. He's betting half of his points. Yeah, I'm going home. We're going. I'm going. I'm going for it. I gotta go. I gotta go for it. That's it. This yeah. could end the game either way. Thirty-two. Right. <laughs> Thirty-two points. Wow! Holy shit! Yeah, I, I'm not. I, I got an opportunity here, and, and you're doing really well. I gotta wow. try to get this. But thirty pants, but thirty points is not insurmountable. I mean, you can do that another. Foot on part. the neck. Foot on the neck. Wow. Okay. I was this close to going all in, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> Tom, your question. Oh my god. Uh huh. Thirty-two points is on the line. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ, this is big. <clears throat> Moland Springs was to be the name for a new bottled water company. Merging Morgan Springs and what other company? That would be Poland Springs. That is incorrect. Oh my God. Tom has, and Josh can't steal because it's a daily double. We're looking for Poland Creek. Oh. oh. Hey, I, I, I risked it. I risked it. That was what it was. Damn it. Wow. Wow. Okay, I probably Tom. should have known they probably couldn't use Poln Springs. Tom, back down to 32, and there is a silver lining. That's what Mark Ellis is here to provide Damn for it. you. You still have 18 points on the table in this category that could get you right back in the game. So totally. it's, a, it's a tough blow to recover from. There's going to be a little bit of a hangover, but maybe you can bounce back and get back in the contest. That was a big one. That was I, a big you one. You went bold and you a lot more. more. That was big. It was huge. Okay, Tom. Yes. Right. Your eight-point question in the category of occupational hazard. Jerry gets heckled by Kramer's pal Toby, ruining his set and earning him a scathing review in what popular magazine? Hmm. Hmm. Toby. Uh, can you repeat that, Mark, please? I can Thank you. Jerry gets heckled by Kramer's pal Toby, ruining his set and earning him a scathing review in what popular magazine? Um, is it Reader's Digest? That is incorrect for uh, a giant eight-point steal. Josh, do you have uh, the heart to steal this from him? I, th I think it's the New Yorker. Entertainment Weekly is what we're looking oh. for. Oh, wow. Wow. That would have been a big one. That, that could have been, been foot on the throat. Holy cow. Damn it. Okay. Wow. wow. Entertainment Weekly is what we're looking for. Um, last question in the category of occupational hazards for 10 points, Tom, and a much needed 10 points. Yes. At a local video store, Elaine prefers Vincent's employee picks, but Kramer convinces her to rent a gene pick. What movie was the gene pick? Uh, is it. Damn, I know what Kramer watched. Um, that wow, well, that's a tough one, man. Uh, what was she watching? Uh, I'm gonna I uh, five. Uh, oh yeah, no, no, it is. It's Silverman. It's uh, Silverman and the guy. Da, 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 da. Uh, weekend at Bernie's. That is incorrect for a Damn ten it. point steal, Josh. Mark, could you just repeat the question real quick? Yeah. At a local video store, Elaine prefers Vincent's employee picks, but Kramer convinces her to rent a gene pick. What movie was it? It's not Sack Lunch. That was what she saw in the theater. Uh, God damn it. Sleeping Zero. I don't know. I don't know that one. I don't. <sighs> Heartbreaker for you, Tom. We're looking for Weekend at Bernie's 2. Two. Oh, two. oh, I was going to say we can have birdies too because I thought she, I see Elaine going, he's dead, you idiots. He's dead. And, and that's sometimes what I, that's I got it. it. I was starting to read her on the bed. Damn it. It's a simple word, Ken, but two words or one word and one number, depending on how you want to look at it, have cost Tom Dagnino 40 points. It was the word creek and the letter, the number two. 
Yep. Creek, t- Creek 2. He is never going to stick his feet in a crick the same way again. <laughs> no. Not All right, so it's, 30, it's 67 points for Josh, 32 points for Tom Bagnino. And, Josh, now you have control of the board between the categories of Giddy Up, Where the Dingo Roam, and When It Was a Game, what do you want to pick? Where the Dingo Roam. Maybe the Dingo Angel, baby. Angel, baby. All right, this is the category of places. Okay. Category of places in the world of Seinfeld. And Ken Knapsack. <laughs> All right. There we go. Go. Rums. Question one for you, Josh. Uh, the shrinkage incident happened at a friend's house where? The Hamptons. That is correct for two mm-hmm. points. Correct. Yeah, good work. Tom, really hoping he uh, draws a blank on some of these. Next I, need, I need it. I need it. Four points. Four points. Kramer and Newman hatch an epic interstate recycling scheme that would end in what state? Uh, Michigan. Four more points for Mr. McCuga. Saginaw, more. Michigan, the beast. <laughs> Why can't I get that for the 32 points? God, Jesus. Right. Here you go. A six-point question. It is starting to get ugly in this spot here. Three points. Uh, or third question. Jay Peterman becomes a poet slash warlord in what foreign country? <laughs> uh, formerly known as Myanmar, yeah. I believe. So Burma? Burma? Or you, Myanmar? Got both. you got them both, sir. You yeah. got them both. There you go. Wow. He's like, he's like, blah, 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 blah. She's like what was that? He's like, that just gibberish. <laughs> That's a deep thought. That's a deep thought. All right. Fourth question, which is an eight point question. George thinks up his jerk store comeback quip too late as his nemesis Riley was reassigned to what state? Uh, Ohio. Columbus, Ohio, to be exact. That is correct. That is correct. Damn it. That's a nice category, man. Shit. All right. Potential for a perfect. What do you care, Costanza? You're their number one customer. (laughs) Oh, yeah? I slept with your wife. (laughs) His wife's wife's in a coma. Yeah. (laughs) Amazing. That was almost a question. It was almost the question, really? is, where is Riley's wife at the time of the jerk store insult? <laughs> All right. Uh, this is the final question in the category of uh, places, places where the dingo rums. All right. Ten points. The series finale featured a crime and a trial in the small fictional town called what? Oof. Oof. I'm pretty sure it, it's definitely like Massachusetts, New Hampshire, or Maine. I think it's Massachusetts. I don't know. Vernon, Massachusetts. I, I don't know the, the direct name. Huh. Yeah. It could be Tom. huge. It has to be the, the name of the town? Need the name of the town. Yeah, it was in Massachusetts because the plane was going down, right? Mm-hmm. On the record, that's the worst episode they've ever done. Not I, even disagree. I disagree. I disagree. You did, oh, the Puerto Rican Day Parade. Right. That was bad too. But Penny Packer did make an appearance in that. You're gonna need an answer. Uh, that is a tough one, man. That's a tough question. Uh, I, uh, Ithaca, Massachusetts. I don't know. Damn it. Uh, looking for Latham, Massachusetts. Latham, uh, Massachusetts. Latham. Damn. Latham, uh, Massachusetts. Not Latham. That's right, Ken. Um, so Josh, not doing as Damn much it. damage as he could have, but somebody who was correct is going to get five dollars courtesy of Venmo, PayPal, whatever you prefer, and that is Blue Ice Cream, who was the first one to answer. Blue, uh, got, he got that right. Answer. Jesus, that's helpful. In the chat, so five dollars is coming your way, courtesy of this asshole. Blue Ice Cream. <laughs> does the winner yeah, play? Sam, does the winner play Sam Levine in this? Apparently, <laughs> Apparently he's good. He's good. Well, look, here's the fun thing. Why about- wouldn't he be? We did we did Beatles trivia. Ken uh, just lost in at the buzzer to Scott Mance on my show Virtual Bar Trivia last week. So whether it's Beatles trivia, Seinfeld, anything else anybody wants to play, this is how it starts. And maybe you get a new league in the Schmodown. Who the hell knows? But this could grow from here because certainly not just you two competitors. Ken and I are here. You also have a fervent chat room that loves this stuff. So good good answers all the way around, mm. Ken. 87 points for Joshua Hercules Makuga, 32 points for Tom Bagnino, and I, I guess we'd have to put an asterisk next to that. Ooh, that's crazy. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a, that was big. Mullen Creek really killed me. 
Because yeah. it's like Mullen Creek and then Poland Creek. What was it? Poland Creek and Mullen Creek? Yeah. Mullen Spring and oh, Poland Creek. Exactly. They flipped the names. I should have known that. That yeah. was just bad on my part. Go ahead, Mark. Sorry. That's all right. All right. So where we go now is we go to your final category, I believe. Ooh. Right. In round in double jeopardy. Is this the, the Josh pretty? Is this the uh, the writing round? <laughs> is it the writing round? It's not my channel. I don't care if it gets flagged. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is going to be the writing round. So the yeah. gentleman will write down your questions, uh, your answers, excuse me, to the questions that I'm about to ask. And this is from when it was a game is the category. And, Ken, do you have any idea what when it was a game it might pertain to? Uh, Ken Burns documentary? <laughs> yeah, the, the it was an HBO documentary. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm looking at the questions, and, uh, oh, yeah, okay. I get it now. I get it now. Yeah. These are all somehow referenced to the love of baseball by oh, multiple. Uh, I should have went with this too. Cast members and characters in the world of Seinfeld. So currently it's 87 to 32. So Tom and Josh, write down your best attempt at an answer. Once we ask you by name to reveal it, please do so. Uh, I'll take the first question for two points. George befriends a rowdy bunch of loud mouth executives from what major league baseball team? <laughs> you sons of bitches yeah one of the most off quoted between tom josh ken and myself yeah Amazing. look at you sons of bitches look at the beautiful bastard you tell <laughs> those son of bitches we're never gonna he's like george <laughs> look at the beautiful bastard me it is the houston astros that is correct tom did you have that uh yes houston astros there you go right, two points apiece uh, Before they started stealing signs, they were on sign. No, yeah. All right. Jen, you're up next. All right. Next question in this category, gentlemen. George Steinbrenner, the late great George Steinbrenner, falls in love with the calzones from what Italian restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> Ken, I really did have a ball writing these questions. This was a lot of fun. I am a... Uh, Having a ball, reliving all the moments, listening and reading these questions. It's great. Kramer Watch tries to pay with the change and oh, then yeah. eats his clothes in the pizza oven. <laughs> That's amazing stuff. All right. And he has five, all the change walking down the street. Four, and... Three, two, one. Tom, going to you first. What do you have? Uh, Paisanos. We can accept that. I don't think it's spelled right, but <laughs> it worked. Yeah. By the way, this is my first headshot that I'm writing the answers on the back of. So you're Amazing. Welcome. It looked like I a young know. Bill Bixby. It looks like Jonathan. Totally Keep that haircut up, Josh. It looks like you're the grandson of Count Chocula. In that yeah. Haircut. Wow. Totally. And Josh, you had Paisanos? Uh, Paisanos? I believe that's how you would spell it, maybe. Mm -hmm. That's the Italian. Mm -hmm. There you go. I spelled it Dutch. You know, Todd Gack. Because <laughs> yes. yeah. that is the Todd Gack episode. That's the Gack yeah. episode. It is. He's like, what do you think Gack is? He's like, sounds Dutch. Sounds Dutch. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Your six-point question, write down the answer as soon as you think you know it. Mr. Wilhelm joins a cult disguised as a cleaning company called what? All right. I hear squeaking. I hear the sound. I'm sure he's running out. Hitting whiteboard. Uh, Josh, let's go to you first. What's your attempt at an answer? Sunshine cleaners? Six points for Josh. Does Tom have it? Uh, same thing. Uh, sunshine. All right. All right. So, He's like what? Um, but why him? He's like, hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, twelve points per competitor in this round. Um, can we move on to their eight-point question? All right, eight points. Here you go. Morgan oh. Creek to the horny. All right. What four-word phrase is uttered to Keith Hernandez by Newman after a Mets loss? <laughs> the the four-word phrase. Need it all. Need it all here. The famous loogie incident. Mm, one of the all-time best episodes. I take it as fun. Uh, it, it's that's that that's the episode they say it really took off. That mm -hmm. two-parter. Um, the, the boy I, I, Yeah, the, it was just. Yeah. The applause break that the crowd gives Jerry after he says that is one magic loogie what is, is 
best just roaring of approval totally. of a scene I've ever heard. In it, it was just probably one of the best. And you don't realize that the, that the entire show is a play on JFK yeah. until like that moment. Right. Yeah. It's, it's sick, yeah. dude. It's so well put together. That's when Larry David was on fire. Guys, how different do I look to this picture? It's you really can't. I even can't tell if your mouth wasn't moving, I couldn't tell who's talking right now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't know. Yeah, um, who the hell is that guy? All right. Tom, your, uh, your answer, uh, nice game, pretty boy. That is eight yeah. points for Tom. Does Josh have it? Fuck. I said, nice play, pretty boy. Oh, God. damn it. Ah, big swing there, big swing. <sighs> that is big. So now, Tom, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's closer. Every point helps, Ken. Yes, it does. What's the score right now? Do you have that? Um, yes, I do. It is uh, 99 for Josh, Ooh. 52 for Tom. Okay. Not okay. a runaway. He's so not a runaway. This could be it. A Final so, Jeopardy thing would be – Not closer. And Final Jeopardy does involve betting. I was mistaken okay. earlier. Perfect. And I appreciate Perfect. Final Perfect. Jeopardy does involve betting. So just keep that in mind. Perfect. Okay. In the category of when it was a game. Your final question for 10 points. In the abstinence episode, George becomes a hitting genius and relays his knowledge to which two famous Yankees during batting practice. We need the names of both famous Yankees. First and last? First and last. Oh, first and last? Okay, give me a second. Yep. Not their numbers, not their stats, full names. I'd be hard pressed to get their numbers, Ken. Yeah, you know, we're not doing I mean, uh, names. I know one of them, but I, I don't know if it's the other one. Uh -oh. There's a I'll lot of Yankees it. in the history of the show that have popped yeah. in from time to time, and a few Mets as well. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, five, four, three, two, one. Everybody got their answer. Josh, you're going up first. What is your attempt? I wrote Danny Tartable and Bernie Williams. That is incorrect. Does Tom Dagnino have it? Uh, yeah, it's the answer is uh, Derek Jeter and Bernie Williams. A very young Derek Jeter. That's right. Wow. That. Wow. That. This, this is a good one. That this is a good one. Huge. Got that it. Is buddy. Huge. Big, that. I'm gonna. Distance. I'm gonna go run down and break the windows at uh, the Pickwick Bowling Alley. Let me set the stage for everyone here. If you're watching, if you've been watching the whole episode or you just tuned in, welcome or thanks for staying with us here on Seinfeld. Josh Brady currently in the lead with 99 points to his credit is Josh McCoog. He's got 99 points and Tom Bagnino was not one. However, Tom Bagnino, after a very bold move to risk half of his points on the daily double in Jeopardy. He still retained 62 points heading into final Jeopardy. So Tom... You still have adjudicated yourself very well here today. Here is how Final Jeopardy works. Josh Brady, God damn it, Mark. I want to keep this fucking video up. I'm Alex Trebek, and here is how Final Josh Brady works. Did you get your hair cut in a low-flow shower? Sorry, I didn't mean to insult those. That's funny. This, this is the best that I can do. <laughs> it, looks, yeah, like, it looks good. It looks good. That's your new look. I like it. It I is. Like it. We all got new looks. I, I angrily shaved my head yesterday, and this was the only wig that Amazon could. <laughs> so here's how final Josh Purdy works, is that I'm going to give you the category, and then each contestant is going to give me a wager after I read them what the rules are. So once I give you the category, you're going to have a minute on the clock to write down as many correct answers as you can. Oh, you're just going to rattle off questions? No, it's oh. one question. Oh, okay. But there's multiple correct answers. Oh, okay. So you write down as many as you can. Whoever writes down more correct answers mm -hmm. within that minute mm -hmm. is going to win the points. Whoever comes in second loses the amount of points that they bet. Ooh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the category is Seinfeld fake. <clears throat> <clears throat> wow. Okay. So write down your wager. You can wager as many or as little points as you want. You cannot wager more points than you have. So Tom, once again, you have 62 points. 
So I can't bet a thousand points. You can wager as many as 62. <laughs> points. Uh, Josh, you can wager up to 99 points. Okay. 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 Got it. All right. Write down your wager and then make sure that you wrote it on something that gives you a little bit of slack because you're going to be writing as many right. as you can. So, right. Ken, mm -hmm. you're ready. Yep. In five seconds, I'm going to ask you to hit that, hit that start watch. All right. In one minute, gentlemen, write down as many fake Seinfeld movie titles as you can. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Can they have a minute on the clock? And off the top of my head, I think I could probably get four or five under this kind of pressure. Uh, back in the late nineties, I'd probably nail this. Uh, now this is, I probably get one or two mark. It's just uh, amazing. But I, I'm, my high school me is disappointed that I wouldn't <laughs> get this. It's uh, one of the many hallmarks of this show that I just love is how many fake movies. There's a lot of real movies referenced in this show too, yeah. but so yeah. many great fake movies. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Some that sound on the nose, fake and hilarious, and others that you're like, actually, I would like to see that movie. Yeah. Uh, we are almost there, but still enough time on the clock to write a few down here, Mark. The uh, the chat room chiming, chiming in with their favorite. All right. <laughs> We're at 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, yeah. 4, 3, Two and one. We're going to need some pens down. We're going to need some pens down. Okay, pens down, everyone. Um, Tom, we're going to go to you first. Before you reveal how many movies you wrote down, how many points did you wager? All of it. Oh, wow. 62, 62 points for Tom. So, Tom, um, one by one, I'm going to need you to tell me how many movies total did you write down? Uh, how many movies that I think may be right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight. Okay. I'm going to need you one by one to rattle off every movie that you wrote down. Okay. Uh, should, I, should I show you them? Or, Well, one is uh, Rochelle, Rochelle. Okay. Prognosis Negative. Okay. Death Blow. Okay. Blame It on the Rain. That's four. Sack Lunch. <laughs> That's five. Mountain High featuring Kevin Bacon. <laughs> That's six. Uh, Out of Darkness. And I got to look for Out of Darkness. Hang on. It's what Kramer rented, but it was a movie. Yeah, no, it would. Uh... He won. It would count. He won. Okay, yeah, we got out of darkness. And I think one is called Space Orbit 9. Does that make sense? I think they saw that in a Chinese restaurant, like Space um, Orbit 9, Planet 9. Correct. They were actually going to see Plan 9 from outer space. Damn it. Okay. So you have seven totals, is that correct? Yes. Seven totals. Okay. No, all correct. Yeah. Josh Makuga. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Okay. How many points did you wager? I wagered 35, so Tom wins it. Uh, let's hear how many how many correct I got you have. Death Blow, Cry Cry Again, Rochelle Rochelle, Sack Lunch, Prognosis Negative, Agent Zero. Okay, so what has to happen now is, Tom, I need you to remind me of the name of the movie that you said Kramer rented. It was, wait, what did I say? You said Out of Darkness. Out of Darkness, yes. I think that okay. might be wrong. Fuck. I just have to ratify that with a different website. Then we might be tied, Josh. Jesus. Oh, I man. forgot about Cry Cry Again. That's the one I should have had there. Well, first Zero. you cry. Yeah. And then you cry again. The pull of Mountain High. <laughs> Agent Mountain Zero. High is huge. Yeah. Agent Zero. Why don't you just tell me oh, the, the answer? Like here. <laughs> You're waiting here to just confirm this. Prediction. All right. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Mark, I, I have uh, what I believe is the correct answer there. Okay. Yeah, I think, I, I think, I think the, the question is whether it's out of darkness or the other side of darkness. 
Yeah, I, I have the other side of darkness. I think that's what it is, to be honest with you guys. All right. So, ladies wow. and gentlemen, it's in the entire tie. tie, that means that both competitors have earned the amount of points that they wagered. Ooh. Okay. Jesus, Josh. Tom, <laughs> you wagered 62. I did. And that brings you to 124 points. Ooh. And Josh, who I know didn't get a perfect score in his math SATs, wagered how many points? 30, 35. 35. 35. Josh, 35. So, ladies and gentlemen, with a total score of 134 points, Josh McCuga is your Josh Brady Sandberg. <laughs> Dude, well done. I cry again. A bold statement by Bobby Gucci and Ken. He was bested by the guy who owns this domain. If you got to lose to someone, it might as well be the owner of the house, right? Oh, a matter of words for Tom. Ah. The answers. It's like me guessing a baseball player's team, but not knowing the position. <sighs> Uh, Tom got there, but the out of out of uh, darkness, the other out of other side of darkness, confusion. Still impressive. He knew Kramer rented that movie, and that's where. It yeah. ended. I that's the that's the coma episode, isn't isn't out of darkness the coma yes. episode? Yes. Other yes. side of darkness. Like, yeah. like Ben Stein. Like, ben Stein plays his lawyer. Ben Stein plays his lawyer true. in the episode. Remember, yeah. remember, he's like, uh, you can pull a plug, but you can still eat. <laughs> He's like, I can still go to the coffee shop. He's like, yeah, leave it in. <laughs> here's uh, here's something else about that episode. Is that that's the same episode where Vincent and Gene have their employee picks, and Kramer convinces Land to rent Weekend at Bernie's too. So if Tom had been able to pull Weekend at Bernie's two and get the ten oh. points, he literally would have tied Josh McCoy. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, really? Oh, that would have been unbelievable. Jesus, man. Uh, no, look, I mean, you know, uh, Poland Creek's going to be really, gonna really get it. Um, I, Matthias, uh, who's uh, hard at work right now and also is uh, is from, I believe, Argentina and, and is a big fan of Seinfeld. Um, $50, another $50 has just been wow. added. Super chat. Thanks to him. And I, I agree with him, although I will not be paying any of these gentlemen monetarily. They've taken enough <laughs> of my free beers over the yes. years. Um, you, you boys have earned our respect Crazy. and Ken, I just, I've never seen a display of Seinfeld knowledge quite like this. Uh, you know, this is uh, impressive. I, I know a lot of people say they love the show. I love the show. I couldn't get any of this. 40% of these, I'd, I'd maybe come close to get, this is impressive, especially years later. Tom's like 50. Three years old, like to, to have a <laughs> back then in the nineties. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's an, an impressive. Uh, yeah. Oh man. All right. So, Josh, as a champion, uh, what are your words? What are your thoughts? What are your feelings right now? I mean, I just want Mark. Uh, you did a hell of a job putting this whole thing together. I know uh, how long it takes to put together a Josh Pretty as far as like the fun questions and watching stuff. So, thank you. I mean, I, we couldn't have done it without you. And I think. I mean, I hope everybody appreciates your hard work uh, because it, it was a blast. And, you know, Tom, dude, with, with one word, Creek, this I is a totally it. different ball game. I'm catching up on you. Who uh, knows? I mean, final Josh Brady could have worked in your favor. This is, this yeah, was, again, I mean, this was, this was, it went down to Jim Lampley and a bunch of HBO commentators being like, how did the judges call this a draw? How did they get who and who? It really was, uh, it I, was an awesome it, time. It was, it, it was so great. And, you know, to relive those moments in this show, which is obviously my favorite. And like I said, shape the way I, I, I run my life. Um, yeah. the, 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 the Poland uh, Creek's going to get at me. Um, uh, you know, same thing, just the, off a couple of words, other side of darkness. And, uh, you know, we're sitting here in a different story. Uh, this was just great. I mean, I, Mark, Amazing questions. Uh, I, I did a lot of studying. I mean, you know, I did a lot of sporkle and other things like that. I mean, I was, and I, and I watched the show in, in the background because I take this seriously, no matter what I do, baseball card stuff, whatever the case may be. Um, this, I mean, I lost this in somebody who just played great. I mean, there was a lot of questions I, I couldn't pull that he pulled, and there was questions that I pulled that he couldn't pull. Uh, the way you look at it, this was a, this was a battle. Uh, I went big. I, I swung for the fences and, uh, you know, was off by a word and it is what it is. And uh, it was fantastic. And it's good reliving the show for sure. That um, angry yeah. blackjack dealer that doesn't care about you, doesn't care that you split two tens and, yeah. and you bombed it. He just took your money right after Morgan. Creek yep. and Mullen. Yeah, totally. Um, 
And Cam, you know, it's funny. Uh, I believe you just had a birthday and you turned 34 years old. In your life, have you ever seen a sports competition quite like what you just witnessed? No, this was this was better than the the Music City Miracle, the Miami Dolphins. <laughs> Uh, this was uh, this was a little roller behind the bag. It gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight, and the Mets win it. It, it, it was that good. It, it, it's it's fantastic stuff, and I'm glad that it was good and came down to the final question. Uh, yeah, I mean, I when I study, I study deep. It's the same thing that happened to me and Harloff in the in the, the movie trivia thing when Rocky. I went really deep in some to some things, and you know, I'm talking like the det detox poncho, like just unbelievable stuff. I'm like, he might go crazy here and we might see some real serious, serious questions, but I think you pulled out some really good ones. Um, not any of the ones I studied, but that was, those were most of, you know, general knowledge, but I was just trying to brush up on like, you know, the two, uh, the two street toughs or, you know, what's Kramer's handicap girlfriend column, you know, things like that, like hipster doofus and all these other things that I was ready to yeah. rock with. I was stumped by some, uh, ones that I'm going to kick myself. And every time I watch the episode, I'm going to be like, Jesus Christ. I will say, Mark, your your crescendo of difficulty was just spot on. It was. It was. It was. Totally Jeopardy style. Mm -hmm. Thanks to seven seasons of Schmodown and getting to host a daily you know, trivia show on an app and all that good stuff. And it all culminated with this. And I'll say this, 134 points, 124 points, both are more than enough to get you a residence at Del Boca Vista <laughs> or at least delicious meal at Kenny Rogers Roasters. I turn the final word in this broadcast over to the purveyor of this fine channel, the host of Eating History, and I believe a round of applause and a toast is in order to Josh completing a great season one of his there. History Channel program, Eating History. Congrats to you, Josh. We're all very proud of you, and you earned a well-fought and a hard-earned victory here today. Thanks for having us in your home, virtually. Thank you all, uh, Mark, Ken, Tom, a.k.a. Bobby Gucci. Yeah, uh, what a blast. I mean, we've been talking about doing this for a long, long time. I think yeah. we we I mean, we were quizzing each other at Seinfeld trivia at a Top Golf. Tom, you and I, like, at our first, first totally. Schmoes thing. I mean, there's so many different times when I've asked you questions and you've gotten, you've asked me. So putting this all together has been has been awesome. Uh, you know, as, as terrible as this whole thing is, if a pandemic can create something so fun, you know, yeah, exactly. And I'm just going to go home and cry and then cry again. <laughs> well, um, Josh is dressed like Tom. You're the kid that bought him a Cadillac. Can you believe it? That's true. There you go. Jack Columbus, the pen. Jack Jerry, the pen, what everything. do you think about the pen? This is uh, – uh, I'll, I'll de gladly go for a rematch. We'll get hey, Sam thanks to all the fans watching too. Thanks for all your fervent participation and trivia answers and comments. And uh, Kyle and, and Blue Ice Cream, your money's on the way soon. Congrats, everybody. Uh, well played. And Ken, always nice calling a match with you. And um, I'm just so happy I get to take this shit off and get a shower. Yes. Hey, Mark, uh, one of the first people I've ever seen wear a bow tie with the collar still, the, the bow tie done, but the collar it's, not all the way done. Really well done. Uh, so, I can't. I blame it on all those squats that somehow work the quads, yeah. the hands, and the neck, and the mm -hmm. neck gets thicker, and so I can't quite button this anymore. Yep. Amazing. It's all about Amazing. it's all about chest width and neck thickness. It's a, it's a you That's gotta get tailored is. shirts now. Tailored shirts. Yeah. Wear a tuxedo, but I couldn't make it over to Josh's place to borrow one from his closet, so I was stuck with what I had. Well said, Mark. Love you guys. Stay safe. Bye, bye, fellas. Thank you. These pretzels are making me thirsty. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for everybody who watched Eating History. Uh, like Has uh, Ed Haskell said, if you want to tweet at History, say give them a season two. That'd be amazing. Or Instagram at History TV. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for tuning into the Justin Cougar Show channel. You can subscribe. Thanks to everybody that did a super chat. Maybe the next time we do this, we'll get some super chat questions in all of this. Uh, you guys have been amazing. Now comes the point in the broadcast where I hit end broadcast and I just stare.